So what changes would it make to make the Howling Banshees a force to be feared? I suspect that getting plus one to wound and making the enemy fight last and minus one to hit would be quite a good start. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Eldar once more and more leaks from that playtester codex. Plenty of datasheets and details have been circling the internet for quite some time. Today we're looking at the bone armoured aspects of the Howling Banshees, swift and deadly warriors armed with power swords, who have been pretty decent fans of cutting up space marines and elite infantry for quite a lot of time now. Throughout 8th and 9th edition though, I'd argue that they haven't been one of the Eldar's strongest tools in their arsenal. Damage 1 power sword attacks with low strength were kind of okay at the start of 8th edition, but really these have been codex creeped into oblivion, and for a fairly fragile combat unit, I'd argue that they just don't really hit anywhere near hard enough right now. They're still maybe one of the more interesting fort aspect warriors, they can advance and charge, they do ignore overwatch, and that does mean that they have quite a lot of reliability for actually getting where they need to be, particularly with quicken. However, I've generally been finding shining spears to be a bit more interesting for a similar role, if you are building up a big unit to build around. The rumoured changes to Quicken also say that they're probably not going to be able to double move and charge anymore, so it perhaps means that they need to stand on their own two feet just a bit better. Overall, these leech rules do look like they're going to be a lot more dangerous, though they have gone up in points a bit as well. So in the playtest version of the Eldar Codex, it does appear that Howling Banshees are going to be a squad of 5-10 models strong, an elite's choice for the Eldari, and 18 points per model, plus 3 from their current 15. It seems that quite a lot of the Aspect Warriors are actually going up slightly in points, which I don't really have all that much against. They are supposed to be some of the best trained warriors in the galaxy, and it wouldn't really feel very Eldar if they were just being spammed in mass because they're so cheap in points. I think in general the idea would be to try and make them feel more dangerous, but still feel very fragile and elite, and it does appear to be what they're going for here. Statline wise, they do appear to have a couple of useful buffs. They retain their 8 inch movement, which they had before. They remain hitting on 3s, strength and toughness 3, 1 wound, but they get a big 3 attacks now rather than 2 attacks as they have previously. That alone is basically a 50% damage increase already, never mind the rest. As with the other aspects, they appear to have gained a 5 plus invul save as well. It's not going to turn them into a durable unit, particularly not at plus 3 points per model as well. But they will be a tiny bit harder to kill in return, and I think it is quite meaningful for them with their fairly bad save of 4 plus. As with the other aspects, it appears that the Exarch gets plus 1 wound and plus 1 attack. Howling Banshee Exarchs do look like they're going to be a bit of a combat monster. Otherwise, for keywords, they do get all the normal ones. Nothing really too surprising here. They do appear to be a core unit, and they get the standard Strands of Fate and Battle Focus special rules. Battle Focus probably isn't going to be the most relevant if you're wanting to charge, but Strands of Fate is very relevant indeed. They're a pretty great unit to use an automatic 6 inches to advance on, as they can advance and charge. And as always with combat units, putting in an automatic 6 to charge is a really powerful move, particularly if they're coming out of deep strike, say out of the webway. War gear wise, those Banshee blades are plus 1 strength and AP minus 4 now, that's plus 1 AP from AP minus 3, and still remain 1 damage. The AP minus 4 will be relevant against some targets, anything with a 3 plus save and no invul, though it's not really the biggest buff in the world. Going from saving on a 6 plus to saving on nothing isn't actually the biggest debuff to enemy durability. Still though, it's really not going to hurt against elite infantry. Their shuriken pistols are as expected, 12 inch shuriken shots with strength 4, AP minus 1 and damage 1, an extra boosted AP 2 on wound rolls of a 6, but not exactly all that threatening compared with their massive melee. I get the feeling they're probably rarely going to be shooting with those pistols as well, if they're going to be advancing and charging most of the time. So in general, the majority of the squad is going to be putting out a flurry of attacks, but I think out of anything, the Exarch weapons are perhaps the most threatening thing. The Triscale is the Exarch's sort of throwing disc thing that you can also use in close combat. That's now a 12-inch Assault 3 weapon, with Strength 5, AP-3 and Damage 1, at the expense of very slightly worse melee than a standard Banshee Blaze, only having AP-3. I guess it depends whether or not you want to weight your damage output a bit in the shooting phase compared with just in the fight phase, I guess the strength 5 isn't the worst thing, but I feel like the bigger melee weapons might be a bit more exciting. First up we have the mirror swords for strength plus 1, AP minus 3 and damage 1. These are the ones to go for if you just want a massive weight of attacks out of the squad, as basically with each attack that you allocate to these, you make 2 hit rolls rather than 1. With your Exarch having 4 attacks each, that's going to be a massive 8 attacks here. A Banshee Exarch that's more than capable of going through an entire squad all by herself. Not bad when it appears to be a free upgrade for the squad. The only Exarch weapon that actually costs points is the Executioner, which appears to cost plus 5 more than normal, 
and that one strikes at strength plus 2, AP minus 3 and damage 2. So perhaps makes the squad a bit more well rounded at killing elite infantry. Each blow that this one lands will normally fell a standard sized space marine. I think perhaps the main thing that you're gaining from the executioner is the fact that it's strength 5 rather than strength 4. As the extra damage is kind of outweighed by the mirror sword's double attacks as an alternative. For 5 points I think it's kind of borderline worth it. It depends on whether or not you want the Exarch to be a bit better against things that are toughness 4, 5 or 8. Otherwise the Mirror Swords look great as a default choice perhaps. All of that is kind of fine, but I think where the squad really gets into its own is its massive amount of special rules. Between the Banshee, Mask, Exarch abilities and innate abilities, Games Workshop really does want to give this squad every bit of support that it possibly can for fighting and winning in melee despite being a fairly fragile unit. First up, the Banshee Mask still remains ignoring Overwatch. Now the opponent can't set to defend either, and perhaps more importantly, if you make a charge move against an enemy unit, then that unit can't fight until all other Eldar units have done so this phase. That's a seriously nice to have, as it means that if you're charging multiple targets across the board, it means that your Howling Banshees are safe from being interrupted against, and it means that you can safely fire with other units first, knowing that the Banshees are somewhat safe. It doesn't work if the enemy charges you, but it's still a really powerful quality of life upgrade for the fight phase. Perhaps the biggest gain in special rules though, is that Banshees also seem to be much more vicious on the charge, as well as making the enemy unit fight last, you're also getting plus 1 to wound as well. That means when they're usually swinging at strength 4 for those strength plus 1 Banshee blades, they should be wounding space marines on 3s, and anything up to toughness 7 on 4s. Say for example, if we took a 90 point squad with an Exarch with mirror swords, and you made a successful charge into the enemy, that'd be 20 attacks with those power swords, around about 4 dead space marines around 11 dead guardsmen, and perhaps most impressively, around about 6 or 7 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle without an invul. That is relatively nice generalist damage for a unit that's fairly easy to deliver, and there's every chance they might be able to get other buffs throughout the codex. It'll be interesting to see any other stratagems that they might have, or any of the various Eldar psychic powers, even just the one for getting plus 1 strength could be pretty handy on them, getting to strength 5 would be really nice against a lot of targets. Finally, they also keep advance and charge, as we've mentioned, and then minus one to hit has got a bit more broad reaching. It's not just in melee anymore, it's also against enemy ranged attacks as well. Again, with the 5 plus invul save, it's quite a nice boost to keeping them alive a little bit more than they would normally. It's going to be good against armies that hit on force, but I still don't think it actually makes them into a durable unit in any way. Pricing models with toughness 3 and a 4 up save just don't last that long when they're exposed. Still though, all taken together, this really is quite an impressive amount of buffs to the Banshees. More attacks, better weapons, particularly for the Exarch. Fights last, plus 1 to wound and minus 1 to hit. And you've overall got a unit that's just all round more dangerous. And might actually live up to the precision killer status of the Aspect Warriors. As always though, I do look forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Do you think that these guys are looking strong enough to be worth their 18 point price tag for their decent hitting power and cluster of special abilities? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where we'll certainly keep the regular videos coming. I'll certainly be talking about any other new stuff we learn about the Eldar, and any other Games Workshop releases coming up. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention one way in which you can help support, and that's my Element Games affiliate link down in the video description. Element Games is a UK-based discount retailer. They give 10-20% off Games Workshop's miniatures, and if you click the link in the video description and order anything in from them, a small amount goes to help support Allspets Tactics without costing you any more whatsoever. Can just be a way to help support if you were thinking about ordering in something anyway. For people over in the USA, I do also have an Amazon link down there as well. That works in much the same way. Click the link, buy literally anything whatsoever, and a small amount goes to help support the channel. Can just be a way to help out if you were thinking about picking something up anyway. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.